and you are staying in yours. Learning never stops, and with this motto, we begin our new semester. My name is Dr. Das Saxena, and I am your communication skills professor. In this semester, I will be teaching you English communication part two. So today, let's take a quick look at the syllabus. Like this. 
features, you judge them. For an example, Kalna Ranawat, his face is being a little, you can, you can see that how famous she has become. People have different opinions about her. People like her, people don't like her. We all have that halo and horn effect operating for people when it comes to public speaking. So if we like a person, you are anyway going to listen to them and you are going to judge them. If you don't like them, then is the fear of sounding foolish. Of course, we often think, oh, what if I don't sound intelligent enough? What if I people speak, feel that I am foolish? What if I look stupid in front of the people or in front of uh, 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 an audience? Or fear of losing control? What if I forget my introduction? What if I forget the end? What if I forget the entire content? So the fear of losing control over the content is also one of the fear that we nurture. Then the fear of not being liked. As I told you, we all have this halo and horn effect operating in our minds. Then the fear of being unable to explain. What if I am not able to convince the audience? What if I am not able to tell them what I want to tell them? Or what if I am not being able to make them understand? So these are the reasons we nurture these fear of public speaking. And let me tell you, it's valid. Of course, people are going to judge you. And if you don't look good, if you are not convincing, people are going to call you stupid. So it's important. And if you see the statistics of the people, you'll be really surprised that only 10% of people are confident about their presentations, about their speaking skills. Because, let me tell you, even the best of speakers practice a lot of times before they actually give their presentation. 10% of the people are terrified. They are like, oh, please, I accept death than going in public. They don't prefer to speak at all, but it is somehow going to mar their career. So, if, and there are also people who fall into the category of those 70 to 80 percent, which, who have fear, of course, who have anxiety, who have lack of sleep before the big day, I must say. And if you fall into this category of people, congratulations. It's normal. Clap for yourself. So we are all normal human, human beings and a little nervousness is good for us. It's only going to enhance our presentation. You just need to practice few steps and you are going to say it through. So today I'm also going to tell you about that. It's this, this is a very important thing that you all really need to know is there is a way to control those butterflies in the stomach and that is knowing what public speaking is. So let us simplify it. Public speaking is just an expression of your ideas, opinions, your beliefs to people or it's a way to communicate what you think. That's it. And that can be easily mastered with few steps. Today, I wish to tell you that if you think of uh, maybe your school days, you must have had faced several situations where you've already done this public speaking. Now, think of your KG classroom. I don't know if you remember, or maybe uh, uh, sometime later, your class teacher or your subject teacher might have asked you to explain a topic, or maybe simple things like, oh, what's your name? Who are you? What are, what are your parents' name? What do you like? What you don't like? So all of these things are public speaking. So it's just, we need to know what we have to speak in an efficient way. Right? And as you progress in your career, as you move up the ladder, you will have several situations, several occasions, several events where you will have to show your public speaking skills. It's important. My dear students, I have a solution for this. And the solution is just following these three steps of public speaking, which is, which are prepare, practice and present so just do your work on these three steps and you will win the world now let us understand 
the preparation phase. It's very important that before you give a public speaking or you deliver a public speech, you are relaxed. Meditate, do things that help you, do things that help you calm down. You can practice some breathing techniques. You can even meditate. That's helpful. Know the room. Now, it is very, very important that you already have an information about the place where you're going to present. Now, if I say, know the room, I mean the kind, the number of audience, then the place where you're going to present, whether the place will have proper, uh, tools, proper devices that you probably would need. Now, if you are interacting with a group of uh, maybe a, a, a big crowd of thousand people, you probably will need a mic. So whether the room has those arrangements or not, it's very important that you know the room, the lights, whether the lights are good or not. You probably, if you are presenting in a room which is sans light, then it's going to just make you more nervous and it's going to mar your presentation. So it's important that you already have information about the room. Then comes knowing the audience, of course. We are all doing for them, isn't it? It's important that we know who they are, whether we are going to talk to a group of uh, school students or to the uh, gr uh, people who are in maybe graduation or to the managers or a group of veterans. Something, you know, it's very, very important is you know your target audience. You know the gender of your audience, whether they are all male, whether they are, I mean men, whether they are all women or whether it is a mix of all. or the demographics of the audience, right? The time at which you're presenting. So all of these comes under knowing the audience and ultimately you are going to organize your speech according to the audience. What your audience might expect from you from this presentation and of course, what is the most effective way to reach out to them, right? You cannot uh, cajole or persuade people in the same way as you do with others, right? So you cannot cajole a group of school students the way you cajole a group of, or persuade a group of veterans. So it's important that you know your audience. Now comes the main point, knowing your content inside out. Now when I say knowing your content inside out means you are the master of it, isn't it? Now, whatever you say, people are going to believe it. People should believe it for a good and effective presentation. So it's important that you structure them well. What should be the uh, opening? How should be the end of it? All of these things. And what should be the middle of it? Everything should be properly structured. Now, it's important that you prepare your content yourself. If somebody else does it for you, probably will not have that thrust on it as you have it when you prepare it yourself. Keep it, give it a proper structure. Your endings, your closing should always be in a proper structure. Here I mean whether it is a cause and effect based or whether it is according to the chronology or whether it is a problem or a solution based. So all of these things should be structured, keeping your audience in the mind and then you should have a hooking introduction. Your introduction should be convincing, uh, hooking. You sh it should grab the audience's attention. Now, it could be in different ways. You can open with a startling statistics. You can open with a good question. You can open with an information. You can open with a powerful one-liner. So all of these things should be structured well and it is a part of knowing your content well. Then you have a good explanatory inside. Now when I say this, whatever data, figures, facts, numbers that you quote, that you present should be real and authentic. It should be believable, right? So you need to structure this very well in order to reach out to your audience. Then comes the power packed ending. So if you have already started with a hooking intro, don't just get lazy and end it with a mess. 
it's important that your ending is equally interesting equally powerful it should you know grab the audience's attention and it should make them do the way you want to for an example if you are making them buy a product they should be convinced enough to buy that product right so tell them what you have already told them and then convince them according to your speech ha we come to the again to the practice stage which is practicing the vocal techniques now if you think of it uh if you think of good speakers you can clearly make out with the people who can speak well and who can not right it depends on the and it is not about the texture of the voice it is about the intonation that they have in their speeches the ups and the downs the seriousness the softs and the highs so it's important that when you speak you have intonation try narrating a story with no intonation and try narrating a story in front of your family members with a lot of intro intonation of course where it is required you will you can ask for the feedback and you will clearly clearly get one you need to also have the right pitch and tone remember that it is not only what you tell them but it is also how you tell them right then comes the speed and speed the fast and the low slow speed now when i talk about this i mean that your uh, speeches should be uh, at a rate where people can understand and grab the idea now many times what happens people are so fast or the speakers i mean are so fast that the audience sometimes skip the introduction or oh, sorry the information right it is important that we reach out to them and they do not miss out any information so we have to have that pace slow fast whatever you are the master of it and you can understand how it should be then comes the accent believe me if you are just faking it people can forgive you for your nervousness but they are not going to forgive you for being fake so it's not required hey hi hello how are you it's not required the right pronunciation is the key so you just need to have the right pronunciation neutral accent natural the way it is now comes the presentation time and now it is very important that you smile they have already said that it is a curve that sets everything right it is that way isn't it you know smiling makes you accessible it makes you approachable and you immediately create a, an a rapport with people so when you smile you are even bringing down the uh, anxiety and you are improving on your confidence because people are now also relating with you people are also now talking to you you are also making a rapport with them and now you are responsible for what you are speaking you take the responsibility automatically so yes smile it helps you relax and here we come to the delivery that is again presentation presenting this uh, the speech so here are the some of the do's the things that you should do you should always use appropriate language your language should never be such that people feel bad about themselves even if you are talking about a problem it should never be derogatory right so it's important that you speak language or you 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 use language according to the audience and never be ambiguous with it never be derogatory with the words then it's important that you have the right body language now also the mehrabian rule says that non verbal part of communication is very very important right so how you move how you use the space the proxemics of it how you perceive things and how you uh, make small movements so all of these things are going to count you can make movements with your hands but again too much of it is definitely a, not a good idea you can move, make movements with your torso with your hands you can nod while responding to someone you can make good uh, use of your hands and in fact the entire torso 
Use of appropriate posture. Imagine if you're standing like this, if your speaker is standing like this in front of you, slouching and not a good posture. You, de you definitely, uh, you know, are in a non-receptive mode. You don't want to listen to them. So always remember, it's very important to have the right posture. Stomach in, chest out and your shoulders erect. Proper. Hands should be used naturally. They should be left. It should not be like this. It means that you are not open to ideas. So it's important that you make the right use of your entire body language, right use of the posture. Then it's the use of expressions. Now here I mean the facial expressions. Your expression should match with the words. And of course, eye plays a very important role. Your oculistics are going to define how your presentation is going to be like. You know, you need to have proper eye contact with people. Now imagine you are in a room where you have about hundreds of people, hundred of, a hundred people I must say, odd people, odd number of people. So if you are talking in front of them and you are just looking at one corner of the room, then the other corner of the room, of course, will not be interested in listening to you. They may feel bad or they may feel, they may feel that it is disrespectful. So it's important that you look at everybody and after all, your intention, your purpose is to convince everybody, isn't it? To inform to everybody. So it's important that you make eye contact for a fraction of seconds, of course, to, with everybody in the room, right who is under your nose to the person who is sitting at the extreme corner of the room. It's important that you look at everybody, make eye contact with everyone. Now when I say make eye contact, I also mean that you don't have to stare at them. So we'll talk about it later. We have come to the don'ts of the section. What should we not do? Here are some points. We should not use anything to point out to someone. For example, I have this in my hand and if I say, hey, hello, could you please give me an answer for this? This may be offending to people, right? So people may not like it. So stop doing that. Don't use anything, a key, a pen, a duster, a pointer, a keyboard, uh, I mean a mouse, whatever. Don't use to point it out to the people. Then don't use fillers. You know, have you ever heard people speaking with a lot of um, uh, uh, let me tell you, our uh, celebrities, our uh, Bollywood celebrities have a lot, uh, use a lot of fillers in their speeches. It's somehow distracting. You don't get that interest. So a good and appropriate speech, a good appropriate English is without fillers. Now what are those fillers? Oh, like, um, <coughs> so the fillers are like, uh, like, um, I want to say that, um, uh, I am a professor um, in uh, like a university. Oh, it's like this. Imagine, would you ever be interested in listening to me? No. So a good speech should be free from spillers. Then don't look here and there. People have this habit. Oh, oh, during a presentation, they look at the ceiling, they look at everything around, but they don't look at the audience properly. So that's not right. You just have to practice looking at people, looking into their eyes. Now when I say looking into their eyes, I also mean that you don't have to stare at them. Imagine if you keep on staring, it is going to make them uncomfortable. It is going to make them uninterested. So it's important that you speak with the right eye contact. You look at people for fractions of seconds. Then don't use sexist language. It's important that you don't use too much of he, she, they, like, you know, uh, stereotyping things, right? Get rid of this. Then people who talk uh, show biasness or unnecessary patronizing of things, unnecessary love, unnecessary favoritism, all of these things should be completely avoided in your speech. You know, people trust their eyes more than they do on their ears. Or in other words, I would say, people trust their ears 
less than they trust their eyes. So it is said that they believe what they say. So if you want to win this, fake it till you make it. Now when I say fake it till you make it, I mean practice till you reach perfection. Practice till you get into that 10% of people. And believe me, if you practice these steps, you will be from here to here. So all the best students, this is it from my side and we will again meet with another important chapter of English communication. Till then, bye-bye.